Hey guys, Michael with Quiet Lawn here. Um, we've had a full year or a little bit more uh, to try our new mowing crew setups. Uh, if you remember from our previous videos, we used to operate, operate two-man mowing crews uh, using a box truck. Um, we used a big mean green mower, you know, a 48-inch stand-on mower. Uh, and last year we switched to one-man crews driving Toyota Priuses and push mowing properties. Um, and we've had a little bit over a year of experience now and I wanted to go back and share some of my feedback uh, and whether or not some of my predictions uh, were correct uh, and some of the benefits that I foresaw uh, by changing setups if they were actually, actually uh, you know, true. Um, so what I can say after, you know, more than a season, more than a year of experience, uh, some of the pros have been is, uh, just as I said in my other videos when we switched to this, is it's a much shorter learning curve uh, for new employees. Um, learning how to either drive a big truck or pull a trailer and back a trailer is a big skill for most people if they don't have experience with that. Uh, and that can take months for somebody to get comfortable with that. Uh, it also takes a much higher qualified type person, more trustworthy type person to, to do that. Also, learning to drive a zero turn or a stand-on mower or something similar, if you've never had experience with that, also is a big learning curve. Um, you know, it can take, you know, two, three months for somebody to get comfortable enough to where they're not going to damage uh, turf they're not going to damage uh, proper, the customer's property. They're not going to damage uh, your truck and trailer while they're uh, parking the, the mower. Um, so it's just a much longer learning curve than somebody coming in and they already know how to drive a small car. You can learn, you already, most people already know how to push mow. If you don't, you can learn in 20 minutes. Uh, really the only learning curve is learning how to string trim, uh, which takes two or three weeks. So. Uh, we took the learning curve of a new employee from, you know, several months to just a few weeks. Um, and why that's so important is, especially in an industry like we're in where there's such high turnover, is when you hire somebody new, you are losing money until they get to a point where they're efficient enough to be making more than what they're costing. You might go two months before somebody actually is fast enough and efficient enough to actually start bringing in a profit. So the faster you can get somebody up to speed to where they're actually profitable and they're actually proficient at what they're doing, uh, the more money you're gonna make and the more profitable that employee's gonna be, especially in this environment where turnover is so high and you might only have somebody for six months or three months. Uh, and you know if you're on, they're only there three months and it takes three months to get them up to being profitable, you've lost money or broke even the whole time they were there and now you got to start that process all over again. Um, so it greatly reduced the learning curve uh, for new employees. Along with that, the, it reduced the qualifications needed for somebody to be able to operate this equipment. Um, much, we noticed much less damage to property. Before, I would regularly be replacing siding at people's houses. Uh, you know, we still hit a couple of irrigation heads, but before we hit a lot more of them. Uh, you know, I would be replacing, I would be repairing fences. I would re be repairing, you know, stuff on the trailer and truck that our guys would hit with our equipment. And I had almost, aside from a couple of sprinkler heads, uh, I had almost zero damage to property last year, which was, uh, which was incredible. But we're more profitable because our costs are so much lower. Uh, than our setup before and I've talked about that in many videos about why but we were able to be much more profitable last year over our previous setup because our costs were so much lower you know it's much cheaper to operate a Prius uh, it's much cheaper to operate a push mower over a $20,000 uh, zero turn um, you know it's just uh, everything it becomes cheaper it's much cheaper with a one-man crew because you have a lot more efficiency than you have with a two or three man crew uh, and in turn since we were able to make more money and be more profitable we are able to pay our employees a lot more which draws even better employees and I, I've seen the quality of our team uh, increase greatly uh, since last year 
uh, when we implemented uh, all this and we went to the pay for performance system, we have some great guys uh, this year and I've been extremely lucky, lucky to have them. Um, other pro is it's just simpler with less headaches and less moving parts. Uh, you know, when you're operating t a two-man crew or three-man crew or whatever, there are just so many things that have to come together for everything to work out. You know, both guys have got to show up and be a show up on time. Uh, big equipment, your equipment has to work, and if it doesn't, it just throws a wrench in everything. Uh, it's just so much more complication in coordinating that type of setup than one man, you know, go, you know one man just showing up jumping in a car, taking a push mower and going. Um, I noticed that the time that I needed to manage the mowing crews greatly reduced when we switched to this kind of setup just because we simplified it so much and it's so easy. And even if equipment broke down, we've got backup push mowers. That's no problem to have backup 21 or 25 inch push mowers uh, as opposed to you know, having to keep a twenty thousand uh, dollar mean green mower, uh, you know, as a backup, which doesn't make sense. So it just greatly simplified uh, the mowing service uh, and and came with a lot less headaches. We were able to work in bad conditions and have a more consistent schedule. So instead of you know it raining and you not being able to mow a property because you have a seven or eight hundred pound mower with a two hundred pound operator on it you know, not being able to mow that property for three or four days and then having to work your guys on the weekends, work them 12, 15 hours a day to catch up and everybody's stressed. Uh, with a 70, 80 pound push mower, you can basically mow in the rain if you wanted to or right after it rains or in sprinkling conditions. So we found that we had a lot less missed time due to rain. Uh, we were able to mow through most of it uh, and it's very few times that you actually had such a downpour where you just couldn't do anything. Most of the time it rains, it's just, you know, a shower here and there and you can work around it. Um, but this allowed us to do that, which gave our guys a much more consistent schedule. So I don't remember, there might have been one Saturday uh, all last year that our guys had to work, but uh, it, I might not even have had that. But, um, you know, it, it just makes everything much easier for our guys because they have an easier and more consistent schedule. The other big advantage to one-man crews that we found is that uh, we can have flexible schedules. When you have two, you, when you're dependent on other people as a team, it's very important they all come in at the same time, and it really creates a big hassle if you've got two guys waiting on one guy, and you're having to pay the two guys to wait on the one guy that's late. But with one-man mowing crews operating independently. And we even do one man, you know, fertilization crews. We have one man mulching, you know, gardening crews. Um, so all of our model is based off of one man crews. It doesn't really matter when they come in because they're operating independently. Uh, you know, we've got one, one guy, Paul, that his, uh, he takes his kids to school in the morning. Uh, so he comes in, you know, he, t he comes in right after he takes them off. He likes to come in at 8. Uh, another guy might like to come in at 8.30. Uh, you know, one of our guys is a firefighter. Uh, he gets, he doesn't get off from his firefighting job until eight in the morning. So he comes in at nine. Uh, whereas those things would be an issue with our previous setup. Now it doesn't really matter because as long as they come in, uh, and they get their job done, I don't care if they come in at seven o'clock in the morning or 12 PM. Uh, you know, as long as they get their stuff done, that's all that matters. So you're able to give a lot more flexible schedules and cater your schedule to your uh, employees specific needs. Okay, so it wasn't all great. Most of these things were, were awesome, like all the pros way outweighed the cons, but there were some cons switching to this type of setup. The biggest one by far is that it is just much harder physically to push mow lawns than it is to sit on a mower or stand on a ride, a ride on mower and mow yards. Um, it's very physical. Our guys were, were walking probably 10 to 15 miles a day last year and in the middle of the heat. Um, so it is just much harder physically and there's not much way around that. Um, one thing that would greatly help that, one thing that's the biggest weak point still for an electric company running this type of setup is that the mower is still the problem. Uh, we don't have the high efficient push mowers that you have with gas right now. We don't have the 30 inch 
Toros and X Marks and Skags and the 32 inch Ferris, which I love. Uh, if we had electric versions of those mowers, uh, it would greatly reduce the amount of walking for our guys and it would greatly increase their, their efficiency. But now they're having to use mainly 21 inch mowers or, you know, like we talked about, the 25 inch Greenworks, which is not ideal. Uh, but that is a big thing and something we're constantly trying to uh, reduce is that physicality of the mowing. Uh, part of that is trying not to schedule as much work. Um, you know, trying to make sure that we make the job as comfortable as possible for the guys. But at the end of the day, they still have to walk a lot and there's no way around that. Now, if somebody comes along and makes a small, lightweight stand-on mower, similar to that new Hustler, uh, I think it's, a, uh, it's the small residential Hustler stand-on mower. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, it weighs probably about 400 pounds. If somebody can come up with a small 30 to 36 inch stand-on mower or something similar uh, that is lightweight that will have all the benefits of a push mower that it's not going to tear up lawns uh, and it's going to be something that we could easily put on the back of a small car or a Prius uh, we'd be all for something like that but a nice 30 inch or 32 inch push mower would be great as well and I hope that we are able to get one finally in the next year or so because you know, the, these companies have been uh, said they've been working on them and they're coming out every year for several years now, but they still haven't came out. Um, but that, that would be huge uh, and that would be a game changer for our type setup. But our setup works great. You know, it works, but it could be improved. Um, the other downside to one man crews operating independently is that it's harder to build a culture and to socialize with your team because you know if this guy's coming in at eight and he's gone by the time the next guy comes in and then the same thing uh you don't get much time together you know we're operating independently um you know it's good if you know for our guys because uh with the pay for performance they own their own destiny. So if they want to go out there and bust it out and get done early and make a lot more per hour effectively, uh, great. If they want to, you know, make stops, if they want to meet their girlfriend or wife for lunch or if whatever, you know, they, they kind of control their destiny. As long as they're getting their jobs done within the budgeted hours, it doesn't really matter to us. Um, but like I said, it does make it a little bit harder to build that culture that company culture and socialize with your team um, but I just wanted to share my overall feedback for the last year uh, I'm still very happy we are constantly improving as you see in our other videos we're constantly working on these elements right here to reduce the physicality of the job uh, and we're always trying to make it better for our guys but um, you know, if you've tried something similar, uh, I know some of you guys have commented that you've uh, switched to one-man crews. Please let us know your feedback in the comments below. Um, but I appreciate everybody watching. I uh, hope your businesses are doing well and have a great day.